Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about the perfect exercise. Now, what is the perfect exercise? It really is based on your body. So you have people that are completely out of shape, completely burnt out, and then you have those people that are really top athletes. So we're going to just teach you the elements so you can adapt them to your workout. It really exercises composed of three simple variables. We have the time of exercise, we have the intensity, and then we have the recovery. And then you also can have frequency of how many times you do it, but that's the simplicity of a workout. Now the question is if you're going for toning or you're going for fat burning, um, there's different things that you can go for. Like for example, if you're going for toning, you're going to be working the body part a little differently. What I'm going to talk about is mainly overall fitness and fat burning. Okay, it's how to maximize that. So the first thing to know is that the time of exercise is really um, not something that increases growth hormone, which is the main fat burning hormone. So in fact, the more you work out, the more you increase cortisol, the more you add stress to the body. So these people that are doing the, let's say the high intensity, long duration, hour, hour and a half boot camp every single day, all they're doing is raising cortisol. They're not going to get fit. They're not going to lose weight. So ideally to trigger growth hormone, you need shorter time, higher full body intensity, and lots of recovery. That would be the best option. Now let's first talk about intensity. What kind of intensity do I mean? Well, anything that works your every single muscle at one time, that would be the best thing. Like some people would do um, some type of kickboxing aerobic type workout where they're doing um, you know, lower body and upper body. Um, I like to do deadlifts. Um, in fact, that really helps my back when I do that. But doing a good de uh, deadlift with t uh, great technique, you can get some serious intensity because you're using every single muscle that you have. You can also do jump rope. You can do like certain types of yoga is very, very high intensity, you know, to work every single body. So we want to do something that spikes the pulse rate fast and works all your body. But we don't want to do this for a long time. We want to do it short. Now, here's the, here's the rule of thumb. The maximum time of workout if you're doing interval training, which is short, high intensity, rest, short intensity, high rest would be between 20 and 40 minutes. Anytime you have to go over 40 minutes, what that means is that you're going to diminish your returns. It'd be much better to increase the intensity. So I like to do short, high intensity rest. But if you're just starting out or just getting into it, 20 minutes every other day is fine. So what I'm talking about is, let's say you're going to do some type of workout where you would do a high intensity for two maybe three minutes, maybe one to three minutes, and then you would rest for maybe four to five minutes. Versus if you're doing like CrossFit, which is way over training for most people unless you're 18 years old, this whole thing with workout one minute on, one minute off does not work. You're not going to have enough recovery. We want that pulse rate to come all the way down. Uh, I also do biking. So I'll sprint for like one to two minutes really hard, my whole body, and then I'll rest and coast for about two to three to four minutes and then I'll do it again. And I'll do that for 20 to 40 minutes every other day. On the off days, I'll do walking. So those are just some rules of thumb because this will increase growth hormone. Now, the other variable is this recovery right here. All the benefit from the exercise occurs in that second recovery stage, primarily when you're sleeping. Um, and 48 to 72 hours later, that's where all the good stuff happens because this is all just stress this is all just rebuilding, recovering, fat burning, um, and that takes some time. Now with recovery, um, if you're doing high intensity, you have to be in really good shape to do that every day. You may be uh, wanting to do that every other day. Now, there are some people that I work with that have to recover a lot longer. So I might have them do a high intensity workout and then recover for four to five days. I've had people that I switch them from every other day to once a week and man, they start losing weight like crazy. So this is something you want to test in your body to see if you're not losing weight, increase recovery and see if that doesn't help you versus sacrificing your sleep, getting up early at four o'clock in the morning to get that workout. It's much better to get to sleep than it is to work out because that's where all the good stuff happens. If you're overtraining, 
by not sleeping and working out too frequently, you're not going to see any results. And I have a lot of people. I have one lady, she was working out six hours a day. Nothing, no results. I mean, she's overtraining. But in her mind, she's thinking burning off calories, but it wasn't working. So we want to play around with this. So in the recovery phase, you got to make sure that your stress is low. You got to make sure you're sleeping. You got to make sure you're not um, overdoing it. You're not eating the incorrect things. But a lot of things uh, food-wise can go into this too. Like if you were to eat a little sugar or a little wine or a little juice, you're going to pretty much kiss that benefit from workouts um, out the window for about 48 to 72 hours as well. And I'll do another video on that. But the point is that there are things that can screw it up. Hidden carbs, a little bit of sugar. So this is, um, so what we want to do is we want to shorten the time. We want to increase the intensity, but you got to do it at a very gradual pace because it's very easy to overdo it and hurt yourself, which I'm guilty of as well. I'm like, jump right in and all of a sudden end up with a, you know, sprained ankle or something like that. So we want to do that. And then the key is to let your body recover. I like to do every other day and see if that works for most people. So, so those are some variables, but you want to play around and see what uh, what's best for you, okay? And also, I have a quiz down below. Take the evaluation quiz, and this quiz helps you to find out a lot of other barriers that you might have that are stopping you from getting healthy. Thanks for watching.